My name is Douglas Ferguson. Today I'm going to be doing a color grading tutorial in Adobe, Adobe After Effects CS6. Um, it can be applied for CC, it can be done in DaVinci Resolve, pretty much anything. Um, any, any color grading um, program that has decent color grading tools. And what we're going to be doing is a Kodachrome tutorial. And Kodachrome is actually a photo stock, but it looks really good on a uh, video especially if you're trying to go for like a more vintage look or you want to have this more gritty dark look about it um, it's really known for the way it renders colors and the way it makes certain colors pop and 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 makes certain and mutes the colors the color tone and gives it this like really 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 rich look it's also known for its contrast it was introduced by Kodak in 1939 and discontinued in 2009 I believe and it's something that's sort of having it's a revival on, on film and, and certain films when they're trying to look for a certain look um, Hateful Eight used a touch of it Carol used it um, uh, Man in the High Castle which is actually not a film but a TV show and, and certain other things especially the way it renders the color red is a way a lot of a lot of um, People want that look, and a lot of filmmakers have been going for that look. So, I decided to, I mean, do a color a color grading tutorial, and I found the initial coloring of this like a couple of years ago, maybe two years ago, three years ago, and I really liked it. But it looked great on like DSLR footage or like drone footage. It, you know, it looked really good. But if you shoot with Black Magic, if you shoot with Red, mm, it wasn't really hitting it. So I set about looking for different ways to do it. It took me a while, but I finally nailed it and I decided to do um, a tutorial on it. So here we go. So the first thing you're gonna do is you wanna add an adjustment layer. Um, so just for, for time's sake, I didn't do any basic color correction on this this footage. But you definitely want to make sure you do your basic color correction before you do the grading of this because if it's too flat, it's not really going to look that that good. But if you have your blacks set and your and your white set, it's really going to pop, and that's what we want. So you're going to go to black and white. And you're just going to go to a blend, multiply. Then we're going to shut this off for right now. We'll come back to it later. Then we're going to add another adjustment layer. And we're going to go to hues and saturation. We're going to bump up the saturation to 50. If you're using like uh, DSLR footage, I would suggest you go to 25. As uh, I, I noticed like on DSLR footage, um, Unless you're doing, you have a really good uh, codec, it's gonna like if you have like S Log three or something like that, you'll be fine. But normally, if you at twenty at fifty, you start seeing some blocking. So if you're using like, you know, T two I or something like that, you might want to go to twenty five instead of fifty, so you don't see any artifacting in your footage. So then we're gonna go over to the reds. We're gonna drag our reds into the magenta, minus one. Just, we just don't want it to touch on the magentas. We don't want it to go all the way into the magenta. And we're going to go minus 6 on the saturation. And then the lightness, we want it to be around 15. So lightness 15. Me. Then we're going to our yellow. And you're going to bump the yellow lightness up to 25. And then we're gonna go to blue and we're gonna hit minus seven to drag our blues into the cyan a bit. Then you go to channel mixer. And then we're going to go to red, red 85. Red, green, 10. Red, blue, minus 15.
and then your red constant is going to be 15. Then we're just going to simply go down to blue and red blue is going to be 10. Oh, 15, excuse me. And your red green is going to be minus 10. All right. And then we're going to go over to color balance. Now, this is where I would say you have to do this almost by eye because your skin tones can be rendered a bit magenta. -y. Uh, magenta is not a word, but it is now. Um, it could be a bit magenta and you don't want that. So I would say in the highlights of the color balance between red and green right here is where you want to make your adjustments for your skin tones. So just be aware that when you, if your skin tones render a bit magenta, just play with those two until you get it the way you want it. So red shadows minus 25. Your red midtones is also going to be minus 25. So red midtones minus 25. And then um, red highlights is going to be 15. Then we go to green and that's going to be minus 15. So you play with these two right here until you, you get your skin tones the right way. So you're either going to go more green and less red or less red and more green, you know, until you get it right. Then green is going to be six, no, eight. Between six and eight for the midtones and green would be ideal. Actually, let's go to six. Six is better. All right. So that is the initial color grading right there and it does that I learned uh, a few years ago and, it, and I really liked it I like the way it made the colors pop and stuff like that so but it wasn't it so uh, what I discovered was if I added a layer of black and white and just hit that as a blend then it gave me a little bit more grit and, and, and had that more look to it obviously we're not gonna leave this at a hundred percent I would recommend between 50 and 75 depending on the kind of footage you're using or the kind of shot you want but really it's by eye so for this we're gonna go 50 because we're gonna add more contrast in a bit then we're gonna add another adjustment layer and then we're gonna go to color finesse if you've never used color finesse before it's a really cool nice tool for um, uh, Adobe After Effects and it already comes with Adobe After Effects so it's nothing you have to buy or add or anything like that it's already a part of the program full interface and the first thing we're gonna do is if you need to make any smaller adjustments like to your footage to get it right you know, you have the RBG, you got the gain, you got the gamma, you got the pedestal. So any tiny little adjustments that you have to make to get it right, you should do it here. Um, so we're going to add more color. That's going to go up to 150. Highlights, I'm going to bring down the zero, but I like them between zero and 25. Midtones, we're going to go to 125. But you can go between 125 and 150 to really get those midtones popping. And then in the shadows, we're really you can go from zero to about 25. I don't want I don't want to take all of the color out of the shadows, so I'm just gonna go to 20. And then also this is where I add just a little bit more contrast. About right there is good enough. A little less hey, right there's good all right that's about it sometimes uh, depending on depending on the footage you might have to use a little bit of a contrast sensor just to really bring in that contrast and then okay and then what I like to do is add just a little uh, tonal split and this is 
totally if you want to this is like not a must must to get the look but I like to add it and um, so I'm gonna use colorista but if you don't have colorista you can still use um, color finesse to do it and it does the same thing and my favorite tonal split is actually blue and yellow a lot of people use like you know orange and teal um, if you want like the David Fincher look, which really looks good in uh, New York City at night, you might want to go magenta and green. You just figure it out. The, uh, if you don't know how the color wheel works, it's the opposite color. So this red, this magenta, those kind of things. Anyway, so got a little bit of blue. I don't like adding too much. And then yellow. And then this again, this is something else. If you really want to make it, try to get that vintagey look to it. We go to selective color. And we're just going to really quickly, going to go to blacks. And you're going to just drag this over a tiny bit. A lot of people abuse this. We've all seen it. We've all seen that kind of, this kind of look where it's way too much. So I don't like that much in the footage. So about right there is good. Then you go over to your neutral. And then you go to the neutrals, your neutral black. And then you're going to drag that over this side to about the same. So what did we do over here? The blacks we did 5.3. So let's do the same with the neutrals. So we did minus 5.3 in the blacks, and I'm gonna do my uh, plus 5.3 for the neutrals. Right there, and that's it. So I'm gonna sh you know, I'll show the full video. I want to I want you guys to see it, like you know. Um, so that's pretty much it, and that's how you do a Kodachrome tutorial. I hope you guys enjoy it. I'm gonna do another one. I'm gonna do a part two of this video um, with Film Convert because I really like the way, just, you know, experimenting. Again, I use Film Convert and I love the way it rendered. I love the way it came out. So, and it really, really gives you that film look. So this was part one. Part two is coming after. I'm gonna be using different footage. Um, probably gonna be using some daylight footage. Uh, this is just a quick outtake from actually a Kodachrome test shoot that I did, which was like, it's going to be a whole little short that I, I did and um, I'll, I'll put it up and post it so you guys can see it. And this was mostly shot at night because Kodachrome looks really good when you have contrast in the image already. So when you have shadows and you have light, it really, really, really just makes it look beautiful. So I shot it at night. The other footage I'm going to use is going to be at daytime so you can see the difference. Uh... Hope you guys enjoyed it, and I look forward to doing more. Uh, if you need anything, you can just uh, send me a message. If you have any questions, comment below, and I'll try to do more of these coming up in the future. Thank you very much. Mm.